What's going on guys, it's John Owen. Today we're gonna to be talking about how you can web scrape anything off of Twitter, any information at all that you want. Think about like pages or tweets or uh, lists or anything else, right? Handles, all of that kind of stuff, you can do it. Now in the time that I have been talking already, we've already scraped over 19 results from Twitter, right? And these are actually 19 results that we scraped out of 100. We just filtered it down to 19 that were actually suiting the exact filters that we had. Now, if you were to do this manually, at least for me, like scraping 100 different uh, tweets would probably take me like an hour. We just did that in what, 20, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Uh, so it's, it's incredibly powerful stuff. And the reason you'd probably want to use something like this is maybe you want to scrape leads off of Twitter, right? So that's powerful stuff. You could scrape thousands, tens of thousands of leads pretty much instantly. Maybe you wanna find uh, your competitors and you wanna do an analysis on them, right? See what is working for them, but also what's not working for them. Maybe you wanna find viral content really quickly. You can easily set that up and I'll be creating a video describing just how you can do that. And then lastly, maybe you wanna reach out to influencers or find partners, right? So those are just four reasons that you may wanna web scrape information off of Twitter, right? So um, let's get into how this actually works. You don't need to know any lines of code. You don't need to know anything tech Technical. I'm going to walk you through every single step and it's only going to take a couple minutes. How we're going to start is by going over to appify.com. You can web scrape uh, so many different you know, websites, including Twitter, using Appify. It's free to get started. You don't need to know any code. All you have to do is sign up at the top here. And once you uh, have an account, you can go ahead and log in to that particular account. Once inside, we're going to go over to the store page here, okay? And in the store, you can see so many different use cases for Appify. This is such a game-changing software, but you can scrape really, really almost anything you want. Google Maps, no code necessary. You can crawl websites or, or web scrape websites, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, Twitter is what we're going to be doing today. So we'll type in Twitter at the top, and we're going to use the first model here, which is Tweet Scraper version 2, paper result. Now, you'll see there is a cost associated with it. It's 30 cents per thousand tweets. It's probably take me five hours to uh, personally manually if I was to go through one by one and do this. But with this, it's going to take me 30 cents, right? So that's pretty cool. And the, the reality is, is when you're, we're talking about web scraping, like, you know, you can do this all by hand. It's just about speeding up your workflow because would you rather be spending five hours doing the work manually? Or would you rather be spending 30 cents to be doing this work automatically? And the answer is probably pretty clear, right? So in a workflow like this, we can scrape almost anything. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reset this workflow just to work from the ground up on what you guys should expect when you come in here. But you can see here that the, the workflow or the uh, web scraper provides us a lot of examples of how we can scrape this content. So for example, we can scrape uh, status pages, right? So if we just kind of copy and paste this in, um, you can scrape this status, right? Maybe not super beneficial at the beginning because you're just scraping one status at a time. You can scrape the actual page Appify. So maybe you want to scrape, uh, you know, think about Appify. Maybe this might be a competitor, right? You can enter in a competitor and you can scrape all of their posts. Maybe you filter based on what's doing really well, what has a lot of likes, retweets, comments, all that kind of stuff. And you take the content that's, that's doing really well for them. Maybe you want to do like a general search query, right? So um, instead, what we could do is coming back in here, instead of going for a particular, um, maybe instead of going for a particular um, uh, brand, we could enter in a search query like this, and we'll just copy and paste that in here. And this is going to search for Appify, right? So we can take all of these results, and then you can also do lists as well, which is cool. And then you can do re uh, with replies, right? So you can grab a user and if they've replied to something, you can scrape that as well. So it's really powerful stuff. Pretty much the, the you know, options are endless here. You can scrape any way you want. For the purpose of this video, we're actually just going to be using the search scraper here. So we're going to go down just a list of search results. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to change this to digital marketing. So we'll just go ahead and change this to digital marketing. And really simply how you can do that is just search something in the top bar here, right? And once you grab, uh, you type it in, you just grab the URL and then pop it in here and we're good to go. We're gonna remove the search terms just to make this a bit more vague for right now and also remove Twitter handles. You can filter by specific users uh, in the space too and conversation IDs. This is a bit more technical. If you're not familiar with coding, I'd probably recommend staying away from that. And we're just gonna limit the results to 100 for now, actually 50 
safety seems pretty good to me. And also under the run options down here, guys, you do have a fail safe of results, like a maximum. Please make sure to keep this low when you're testing because if you don't, and this is high, it's gonna cost you a lot of money if you make a mistake and run something and it costs a lot of money to run it and um, you're just testing, but you're not gonna use the results. So this is a quick and easy way to save a lot of money. So we'll close down run options here, and then we can filter tweets. So maybe we only want verified users, maybe we want only Twitter blue um, users, or maybe we want uh, only tweets with images or videos or quotes. You can kind of filter based on that. And then in the query wizard here, <clears throat> we can make sure that we uh, filter down even further as to what we want. Maybe we only want tweet authors, which I'm going to pass on. Maybe we only want tweets that are in reply to somebody, which I'm also going to pass on, or mentioning somebody, which I'm also going to pass on. You can have geotagged uh, tweets near a particular location like Los Angeles and have it 15 kilometers around the radius of Los Angeles, or you can type in um, a geocode location with a distance around that geocode location. And then a place object ID is just an ID to reference a particular place. This is more for pro, uh, programming. So we'll just go ahead and leave it like that. And we can also make sure that there's a minimum amount of retweets on here. So we could do like 10 and then favorites 10 and then minimum replies is 10. And we'll clear the start and the end date because obviously we don't want it to be starting in 2021 and ending in 2021. And from there, we can go ahead and save and start. And we're going to start loading in some uh, results here. And I think what's important to note is that the first time you run something like this, it might not return the perfect results, right? And if it doesn't, that's okay. You just kind of got to go back and fine tune the web scraper. And when I mean fine tune, I just mean that you should probably play around with the filtering. Make sure the filtering isn't too extreme. Make sure you're not adding too many, uh, you know, users or search terms. You want to have it um, filtered enough to get the results you want, but not too much that you don't get enough results, right? So in this case, we got 42 results returned out of 50, which means that eight of them were automatically filtered out. If we go ahead and just view JSON here, we can kind of take a look and see what some of these look like. So if I go to this URL here from what we just scraped, we can see the exact post. <coughs> So CV design revamping services offering tailor made. Okay, so you know, this is probably not the best thing that we'd want to scrape, right? So not the most ideal ideal post, we can just kind of go down a couple other ones. This is like, um, same kind of deal here, same person as well. Uh, next person down here, tech skills at your bucket list. Let's take a look at this. I was just reading the, uh, tie, or the the comment there. So tech skills in your bucket list, if tuition wasn't an issue, which course you'd like to enroll. So you can quickly collect information like this, right? And if you're finding that the results that you're getting are a bit too um, loose, right? You're not getting uh, the, the desired results, then you can increase the filters. And if you're not getting enough results, you can ease the filtering until you get the exact results you're looking for. So that's it for this video, guys. We're gonna be making uh, a couple other videos on Twitter web scraping as well. If you like this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel down below because I will be releasing content like this almost on a daily basis. If you guys have comments or you just want to reach out, uh, you can post in the uh, comment section down below. Thanks once again for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.